Okay, this video is to get you started with the lesson called Build a House. So here's the house that you're going to be building using the code that we learned in the last lesson. And in the last lesson, let's see here, I'm just going to show you the website that, or I should say the YouTube channel that we used, which was Left Peel. And rather than going to Left Peel and just clicking, you know, and finding the spot, where he had us create a rectangle and a circle and so forth and polygon. Uh, rather than doing that, I'm going to show you, we have this link here for the cord, co uh, code resources, so I click this. Rather than you, uh, we can go straight to point methods, line methods, circle methods, rectangle, oval, polygon. So the first two we're going to use rectangle and polygon. I'm going to click on rectangle. And this is just a reminder for how, what the code looks like. So rectangle point one, point two. Okay. So when we get back to our code here. I've got the code started. And here's my rectangle code. So there it is, rectangle point one, point two. And how did I come up with these coordinates for this house? Well, let's go look at some graph paper. Okay, I opened up my graph paper to give an example. And just want to quickly point out that in computer programming, the y-axis acts a little bit differently than what you learned in math class. In math class, a positive y goes up on the screen, positive x is to the right. Uh, but in computer programming, we assume that this is your screen, and we always start in the upper left corner of, of the computer screen. And so a positive Y actually goes down. So a positive Y, and in this case, my screen is 500 pixels down, 500 pixels to the right. So I, and we still say X first, so X comma Y. So we'd say 500 by 500, and that's our screen size. And so when I go back and look at this guy, this screen that's made is right up here, zero, zero. 0, 0.00, 500 is 0, 500, 500 is this corner down here. And if we look at my code, I'll verify that. Right here is where I set my screen size, X, Y. So this piece of code just says, create a window, 500 by 500, give it the name house. And that's what we're doing. Here, I'm just going to run it at F5. Let's see what happens. Let's close this guy, and let's bring the house to the front. Oops, I must have closed it. Let's do that again. F5. I'll just minimize this guy, because otherwise it closes the other one. So here we are. It gives it the name house, and it creates a window 500 by 500. All right, so now, if you want to see graph paper and use graph paper for this assignment, I put some down below here just as an example. You can just use this to visualize, or you can actually download and print if you want a piece of paper, graph paper. This is just the Word file that I took a screenshot from this, but it looks exactly like this. But it might be helpful if you want to draw, sketch it out first, and that way you just have dots drawn on a piece of paper and sketched out. Anyway, so we're going to go with... We're going to go with... 150, so I'm drawing a rectangle from point 150, 300 to 350, 480. XY to XY. All right, so if I show you on this Word file, if I were to go up here and click Draw, oops, hold on, let's go to Insert, uh, Shapes, and I'm just going to draw it and show you what the computer is doing. So I'm going up here to one, to, uh, these are in increments of 20, 20, you know, 40, 60, 80, so I've got to go. 150, which is halfway right here, halfway between 100 and 200. Then I got to get down to 300. Okay, there's 300. And now I start my, I click and hold, and I'm going to drag and draw. And it ends at 350. There's 350, and then down to 480 in the Y direction. So that's 480 right there going down. That's there. And this is 350 right there. So the first rectangle is drawn on the screen. 
But the only problem that we have with my code here is that it's drawing it correctly because when I run it, there's, it's just black on black, so you can't see it. We need to change the color because if you look at the color right here, okay, the background's black, but then the set fill color is also black. So I'm going to go to uh, Google, open up a Google page, and I just type in RGB for red, green, blue, color picker, and this guy pops up this page for Google. And let's see if I want to have, oh, I don't know, some sort of a blue color. I'm just going to pick and drag whatever color I like. And I think I'll go with that one. And so then I'm just going to highlight these three numbers. Go back to my code. Oops, that's the other code. My fault, that's my code that I'm pulling from. And I'll control V and paste that. Now if I leave this black, this is the outline color. I want to keep I want to change this one as well, so I'm going to paste it there as well. Otherwise the line around it is the different color. Now when I run it, let's see what happens. Hey, there we go. And I want the background color to be like a sunny day, like a, a light light blue sky or something. So I'm going to go ahead and change that as well. Run over here to the color picker. Maybe I'll pick something that's a little bit lighter. Let's get it really light blue, very, very light. At least that's for me. You guys can pick your own color. I'll copy that guy, paste it over here. Let's see if it works. F5 to run it. There we go. All right, that's a good start to our house. Got the base. Now, by the way, in the code, we call this RECT for rectangle, short for rectangle, but it doesn't matter. You can just call it whatever variable you want as long as it's consistent. So here's where it's using the rectangle fun function, establishing the rectangle. And then here's where it's filling the color, it's setting the outline color, and then here's the code that actually tells it to draw this object in this win window that we just created. All right, so that's step one.